Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're talking about the GH5S and why I think most people are wrong about this new camera. So here's the deal. The GH5S has obviously been announced. Uh, I have pre-ordered it and will be testing it against the GH5 and reviewing it and using it here in the studio. Um, but there's a lot of initial thoughts going around, uh, other YouTubers, other news sites and whatnot, talking about the camera. And for the most part, I'm seeing some themes that I don't think really line up with what the camera is and who it's really designed for. So we're all familiar with the GH5. It's been out for a while, I actually just posted a review of it finally, and it's a great camera. We love it a lot. It's got some really good things going for it. One of the biggest things uh, and the greatest things about this camera is the stabilization. As you guys know, the GH5S does not have this stabilization and that has a lot of people bent out of shape. And what I'm seeing on YouTube, all over the web, is a lot of people saying, is it worth upgrading from the GH5 to the GH5S? And I wanna kind of um, help everybody get a better picture about what the GH5S is going to be all about. So the GH5 is a great all-around camera. It does really great video and it has some awesome features. Um, but the GH5S just isn't designed for the type of person who likes this camera. So it is not designed for vloggers, YouTubers, um, and people who are going to be shooting like this. A lot of handheld, a lot of run and gun. The GH5S is designed for filmmakers, and more specifically, I would argue, kind of filmmakers on a higher level than even people like me. If you really consider what pro filmmakers need and how they operate, filmmaking and camera operation and lighting is all about control on an obsessive level. So we want complete control over everything, and one of those things is camera movement, and how the sensor is moved and used. And one of the reasons why I think Panasonic, and actually they've mentioned it, and I can put a link in the description to a video where uh, Matt Frazier, I believe, from Panasonic talks about this. Filmmakers want to control how the sensor is moving in a very specific way. And this camera, the GH5, really doesn't fit that bill. Yes, the stabilization is amazing, but if you think about it, the sensor is kind of floating around in the camera, even with all the stabilization turned off. And that's just the way current in-body stabilization works is in a magnetic field and uh, it can still get a little funky so that's why most cinema cameras don't really have built-in image stabilization because we want that sensor locked down and then we want to control stabilization with specific gimbals jibs you know all that kind of stuff so that is one good thing about not having image stabilization as filmmakers we can control that and we don't have that floating sensor but there is another reason and that's the multi aspect ratio and actually a larger sensor to help us understand the differences between these two sensors, I've got uh, this little setup here that we're going to dive into. So huge difference between these two cameras is the actual sensor size. And to demonstrate this, I have some terribly drawn circles. And these represent the two different cameras and their imaging circle. So with the Micro Four Thirds standard, this is all you're going to get. And if they keep going with the standard for the GH series, this is what we have to deal with. We have to cram everything in this area. The sensor and all the light from the lens is going to be directed toward it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between the GH5 and the GH5S. So on the left here, we have the GH5 sensor. You can see it is a micro four thirds sensor and you'll also notice it perfectly fits within the imaging circle. And here we have the GH5S. Now you'll notice it is a little wider than the GH5. If I actually stack it on top, you can see that the GH5S, which is red, is larger. So we actually have a larger sensor and it's primarily um, larger when it comes to its width. So uh, you'll notice the corners actually peek out of the imaging circle, which means that that part of the sensor won't be able to collect anything. And uh, there's a very interesting reason for this, which I'll get into in a second. And you don't have to worry about these because the, the camera isn't actually going to be using those areas outside of the imaging circle. Since my stupid printer is dead, let me 
make sure this is nice and easy to see. And now we're going to talk about video and what the difference is with these sensors. And of course, keep in mind that the reason this sensor is wider is because it doesn't have all that tech around it that is required for image stabilization. So the GH5 has all this tech around it to keep it nice and stabilized. Whereas the GH5S doesn't need that, so we have the larger or wider sensor. So let's talk about video. What does 16 by nine look like on the GH5? Well, it looks like that. And on the GH5S, it looks like this. And this is where you're gonna to start to see the differences between these two sensors. Because the GH5, which I will write at the top, because the GH5 has a micro four thirds sensor, you'll notice that the 16 by nine has to fit within that sensor, obviously. On the GH5S, you're seeing that the 16 by nine, the resolution and the actual area of the sensor that's being recorded is much larger because of the width of the sensor. And you'll notice the edge of the 16 by nine comes much closer to this area of the imaging circle versus this area of the imaging circle on the GH5. And if I take these and put them side by side, you'll obviously see the difference between the two. So on the GH5S, you're going to actually have a wider image, so a wider field of view, and more, you know, taking more advantage of the sensor size. So that's 16 by nine. Now let's talk about the Cinema 4K, which both these cameras can record, and that is the 17 by nine aspect ratio. On the GH5, it looks like this. Once again, it has to be within that micro four thirds sensor. So we're not taking full advantage of the width of the imaging circle. On the GH5S, we have a lot more width going on here and really overall sensor efficiency. So again, there is gaps on either side of the GH5 imaging circle. And on the GH5S, we're taking full advantage of that imaging circle. So that is an overview of what's going on with the whole multi-aspect ratio. Essentially, we're taking advantage of a wider sensor, which for video gives us actual more information and more field of view compared to the traditional micro four thirds uh, sensor on the GH5. And that is another plus to having this camera and not having image uh, in body stabilization. We have more space because we're getting rid of all the tech that is required to keep the sensor stabilized. And we're able to take that space and have a larger or wider sensor on the GH5S. So if you are a YouTuber, uh, wedding filmmaker, documentary filmmaker, you might not need to go to a GH5S. It's not about upgrading. It's just a completely different camera designed for a completely different user. So if you run a studio or a production company that uses a lot of gimbals and you want complete control over how that sensor is moving, the GH5S is going to be great. Of course, there's a ton of other features that come with it, like great low light and whatnot. But if you're a YouTuber or you're just gonna be running and gunning, as they say, or holding the camera a lot, running weddings, I would imagine, uh, the GH5 is just gonna be just fine. It's a great, great camera. And um, I just think we've kind of gotten a little mixed up with these two cameras. They're designed for completely different people and they have kind of completely different pros and cons. So that's really gonna do it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Check the description for those links to those other uh, videos and resources that I talked about about. Um, stay tuned for GH5S content here on the channel. I'll be adding a new section to my GH5 guide with all the information I'll be figuring out there. And let me know what you think of this lighting. Really interesting light. And we'll be talking about that here in the future. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.